Now that we've got our loop sliced up and ready to go, it's time to enter our metadata. The metadata for the loop is here on the right-hand side of the screen, and it behooves us to enter in as much as possible, even in some cases where you may not think your DAW or sampler supports it specifically. If you're working on a lot of loops and you think you're going to save these for later use, if your sampler or DAW gets updated, it might support that metadata someday. And some of it is very, very important. It's not just tagging it with, well, this is a guitar loop for organization. Some of these tags and some of these metadata containers will drastically change the sound of your loop if you don't enter things in correctly. So your author is obviously yourself, and you can click on the little arrow and bring up the pop over there. Beats is going to be very important. If you put the wrong amount of beats, GarageBand or Logic, for example, if you're using this, will not be able to stretch this out properly to fill the right amount of beats. If I wrote this was a seven beat loop, it's going to go okay and then make it fill seven beats and the time of pitch stretching might not be correct. So this is an eight beat loop. It's two measures long. We've got my comments, creator logic. I can leave that for now. That's from the previous loops I was working on. Any copyright, any descriptors. So your descriptors, and this is something that definitely you'll want to worry about for Apple loops because all of these descriptors will help you browse through and find the loop in your Logic or GarageBand loop library. So in this case, it's a single one. It's a part. It's electric. It's a little processed. It's slightly clean, I'd say, closer to clean than distorted. It's kind of dark, relaxed. It's grooving. And I wouldn't call it melodic, but I wouldn't call it dissonant either. Oh, more melodic than dissonant, I guess. The genre, again, we're talking about Apple Loops genre. So the genre for this was rock, even though I would consider it a little funkier. The instrument will go to guitar and the subcategory of electric guitar. Now the key. The key was A, and you'll notice none of it says major or minor. We're just saying A in general. We'll get to major or minor when we get to scale down here. And in general, this particular one, the first one, says A minor, so we'll go with A minor. Oh, that's right, we're working with the clav right now, not the guitar. What am I doing? Not an electric guitar, it's a keyboard, clavinet. There we go. The meter numerator. Now we're talking about the top portion. This is in 4-4, four, four, so we're going to do 4 for the numerator and the denominator. And then I'm going to pick the playback type. This was a loop, it's not a one-shot. We want this to be repeating, repeating, repeating. It's not a single thing. The tempo we know. Now here's an example. We can get into actions and scripts to make this go a little quicker. So the scripts are Apple scripts, and they're made easy for you right here under the scripts menu. Let's estimate the tempo. If I did my job, it should be able to figure out that this is at a tempo of 100. And it does. Great. But you'll see there's quite a few other scripts up there as well. If we want to get rid of some of the loop, if we want to get rid of some of the slices, if you want to invert the slices, you can move all the labels, move the slices, you know, all sorts of great stuff. Set the author and comments all at once. All right. Looks like I've got a lot of metadata filled out. This loop is just begging to be used. So when I throw this into logic, anytime I'm looking for something in 4-4, if I'm in the key of A. Now, this is great because now if I'm not in the key of A, it'll be able to transpose this because it knows what key the original one is. And hopefully, with my slices in the right place, the transposition will happen pretty seamlessly. So I'll export this and we'll see what happens.